Happy 4th of July weekend. We are celebrating our Independence Day. But just how independent are we? Jesus claims his yoke to be easy this weekend, but compared to what? In for whom? Come to me, all who labor and are burdened. So who is this that Jesus is talking to? Is it the Jews? Now I imagine you might think your life is laborious and are burdened. Well, obviously it's not just the Jews. We, we all have our burdens and toil. But it wasn't always so. Think back to Genesis and the garden. Adam was called to labor. We were placed in the garden to take care of it and protect it. Well, that is labor and it was our first parent's vocation. However, something went wrong. Satan came to the world and through deceit brought upon man toil and burdens. So look through the history of Israel and we see periods of bliss and we see periods of burdens and toil. Now, because we as a culture do not know the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, we may not see the reasons for their toils. We have to remind ourselves, what did Jesus come for? We don't know the Old Testament well and therefore don't see the bigger picture. The tree in the garden was perhaps the first salvo in who was going to win each of our individual souls. But then, we look to the Israelites who went down to Egypt. Why were they there? Some brother gets thrown into a hole, rescued by some Bedouin, brought to Pharaoh, ends up in jail. Except this man looked to the true God and was able to interpret dreams. This man Joseph helped Pharaoh and looking forward got Egypt ready for an impending disaster. Many came to Egypt because of this forward thinking and preparedness. But some came for the right reasons, to protect their families and bring glory and honor to our Lord. And others came because there was food. And eventually they all became slaves to Egypt's jealousy and everyone's sinfulness. God showed them that he was all-powerful and knowing and brought them out of slavery, bringing them to the land he had promised to their fathers. This was an amazing thing, which should never be forgotten. Our Creator, our Maker, gave us freedom using miraculous means and ways. But over time, the stories faded in memory and became just stories of long ago. I skip ahead to the 12 judges outlined in the books called, well, Judges. A quick glance can tell you how, how things were going. The first line tells you if it says, the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, things were not going well. But the book goes through a recurring cycle, which should be reminding us of all of our focuses. When things are going well, doing well, then the apostasy of the people, they stopped following God. Followed that up with hardship and toil, punishment, burdens. And finally, they cried out to the Lord for help. Note that things are going well when the people remember God and when they forget about God and commit apostasy, things go poorly. Another sample can go to the kings of Israel. Saul never had the heart of God and looked at life with jealousies and fear. David was after the heart of God. Both sinned and sinned greatly. Notice that Saul had little to no humility and never said, I love you, Father, deeply in his own heart, which is where it matters. 
how lest we forget that David was a sinner also. He, he actually had a man killed just to cover up his lustful desires and adulterous relationship. However, he was reminded of, and he remembered himself, God. He realized and also recognized the pain and the hurt. So, he remembered he certainly was not perfect, but he did try to remember God through his mind and his heart. He remembered him, and Israel was consolidated underneath him. But just like the judges, the subsequent king forgot about God. The message God gives of gifts and healing. Satan brings pain and destruction. This is what we should be learning from the Old Testament. It shows the pathway to healing, and we didn't listen. The northern Israel split off by themselves, forgot all about their ways, made God into their own image, and was wiped away by the Assyrians. A bit later, Judah, who had remained faithful with God, began to forget and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Babylonians dispatched Judah, the temple, and everything that made them successful. The great Assyrian and Babylonian empires were defeated and the Jews allowed to go home. Rebuilding what was kept alive by those that recognized what God had and had to be placed first. They rebuilt the temple, they brought back the scriptures, etc. And they looked to God for salvation. But we asked earlier, so why did Jesus come? Yes, to save and redeem us, but also to fulfill the law given to God, given by God to Israel. God did not want burnt over offerings just because. He wanted metanoia. He wanted us to follow the law as he desired to give it to us. He gave us truth to how things should go. And most importantly, he wanted to free us. People were laboring and toiling with sin. Sin makes life difficult. Sin complicates matters, makes the simplest of tasks difficult. Remember from your life all these things. Remove sin from your life and stick with God. All of the labors you do to protect the garden is not toil, but filled with love and devotion to God our Father. The toil that was added by clinging to Satan is cast away. Jesus' yoke is easy because it is of love. He crafts this yoke individually with pure love and for the sake of each of us. We follow his way or we follow our way which has been dimmed by sin. The key phrase that God has been uttering throughout all of these years, Jesus says yet again today, take my yoke and learn from me. Pull away from the pain, pull away from the hatred, pull away from the decisiveness, pull away from your separating yourselves. Be complete with God. Do not be tempted by the lies of Satan in all the forms in which he puts himself today. These are just new words, perhaps, but the same old lies. In today's gospel, the first thing Jesus does is give praise and honor to God, our Father. He should not comp we should not complicate matters, but live within the words and the actions of grace which come from God. We have the ability to be with God in all of the seven sacraments. God gave these graces to his church, whether it's becoming a child of God, bringing him into our hearts, minds, and souls, reconciling all which we do and work in conforming ourselves to God's ways. He calls us to our life's meaning and offers himself freely every day, every hour, every moment to us. Don't become complacent. We have the gifts that he desires for us. Don't throw it away, as we did for so many years. Love God 
and all his people. That makes it our Independence Day. Be good. Play nice. Thank God.